All right, so portraits, lesson number two today is all about color. So that's gonna be fun. Um, if you thought, oh, that looks wonderful. Thanks. If you thought last week was tedious, this week is worse. <laughs> uh, so, sorry about that. Um, but that's why we do the charcoal drawing so we can, you know, hopefully get our brain to see things a little bit differently for us um, and help us work out some issues. I'm going to go ahead and switch cameras. Oh, wait, before I switch cameras, um, today I will be using, I have some Blue Earth, I had their portrait set, which is nice. Blue Earth is really, it's creamy, but not too creamy. Um, and the sticks are kind of small. So they're nice. They're small little rectangles, um, fairly affordable. Um, and they work nicely on pastel mats. So Mary, that's something I, for you I'm if you're expanding. Say, looking at Blue Earth because I've been thinking of getting some. Yeah, I yeah. Very I do have Terry Ludwig uh, pastel set portrait colors back in Cape oh, May. Good. I don't oh, good. Have, yeah. So I'm just winging it here. Oh, that's all right. There's a that's lot of colors that we don't really realize right. are really portrait colors. Right. Um, and a lot of the portrait colors that I had, I put in my box for sunsets, for sunrises and sunset. Those peachy pinks and those salmon-y colors mm -hmm. are always good for that. Yeah. Um, I have... This is the Unison 36 portrait set. I had a, a larger one too. That's the set that got broken up and just put into the general public of my um, of my big set here. Um, anybody? Most people know um, Alan Picard. He's the he's a portrait artist. He I took his um, painterly portrait course, which is when you see that girl and then the African-American, then there's another one. Those all came from that class. We worked with live models, um, but he has on his, probably on his website, he, he had sent out an email and he has a whole list of all the sticks of new pastel that he uses. Um, so I went and ordered each stick <laughs> individually. Wow. Um, I have heard, though, that they don't do that individually anymore. I don't know for sure. Um, but if you buy the, the large set of new pastel, all of the colors that he has are included and you can set them aside. Um, you know, these, the, the new pastel sticks were only like $1.75 each and they're long and that's nice. Um, in Alan's workshop, he likes to carve them down to a point. I did that for a few, um, but the point doesn't stay very long for me. <laughs> I guess I kind of grind it down a little bit too much. Um, so it's up to you if you wanna make them into a point or not. The other thing that I have for portraits is my pastel pencil set which is um, the Faber-Castell Carbothello. Not Faber-Castell, that's a different brand. It's the Carbothello. I have these. Stabilo. Yeah. I like doing them. I like them too. So, but as you can see, I'll show you the ones that I use the most, especially for portrait, are literally like half size now. <laughs> so mm -hmm. my pencils are really down to like nothing. So, and I'll keep these out. Um, there's some good hair colors in that set, like the browns, the different blondes and browns are, are great for some undertones. Um, so there's this lovely rosy color. I guess they go by numbers, 1400. Um, this is great for shadow drawing. These two, it's the pale pink and the pale yellow. These are great for blending when you get to tight spaces that your fingers can't help you with. You just kind of want to move things around, but you don't want to lose color. Um, you won't really be adding a lot of color with these, but it'll help you move it around safely. 
This is the, the darker purple. And this is great for in the eyes, you know, when you're getting some deep information in the eyes, then it's not black and it's not gonna take everything down too far. Um, this one's also great for children's nostrils. The inside of children's nostrils are still a little bit lighter than adults. And then this, there is the, the black one too. So I'll keep those out aside. Um, if you don't have all of these, you'll make it, I swear. Um, <laughs> it's not, you know, I have all my other ones out over here and I keep those out mainly for backgrounds and such. Um, the, the, the portrait set of the unison, they're probably the only set really that I keep as a set. Um, just so I don't have to think too hard and search too hard, but I will. Uh, Rembrandt has a lot of great colors for the face for, you know, like nice little peachy pinks and all kinds of stuff. So I will be reaching into my box for my Rembrandts um, in there. Ooh, that's probably a good one. See, I, <laughs> I didn't pull out, like I told you guys to, I told you guys to pull out different sticks for your paintings and I didn't do that because I have those. Um, but as I'm standing here, I'm looking like, oh, that'll work. <laughs> this child has nice fair really fair skin and, and the highlight and the hair is so fair all right I'm gonna switch cameras all right I just thought I I should wear blood in the glasses we'll go get them or you can use mine they're on the windowsill okay they're <laughs> The cheapy cheaters, I don't even yeah, know how strong they are. <laughs> Mine aren't very strong either. <laughs> you can try those if they work or not. Okay. Oh, all right. So it's not on. Yeah. Oh, now it's going to try and download my photographs. Hold on. Oh. Yes, download them, please. Oh, now they're failing to import. Great. Okay. okay. All right. There we go. Okay. So you'll see I'm, you know, at a little bit of a slant, but this way you're going to be able to see my hand. So just like in the garage, there's just going to be a little bit of a slant there. Um, Um, so I talked earlier last week about the, how we're going to do this. So this first portrait, even though we went through all the painstaking drawing steps, um, we're going to go through, I'm going to teach you how to do the grid method. So the grid method is a nice way, especially when you want to change sizes from your reference photo to the painting. So I have an 11 by 14 board because um, I like that size for portraits. I think it, it gives you a good amount of space to get the, the likeness and, you know, a little bit of room in the background so they don't have to be scrunched in close to the edges. Um, you can certainly do the transfer method which is basically tracing the outline and then transferring that outline to your paper. The downside to that is it's the same exact size as the photograph. So if your photograph is kind of small, it's not doing you any favors, you know? Did, I, did. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what I like to do is to set up in the beginning, and you'll see here, I do one inch squares on the reference photo. And I have the squares numbered. And this is important because that means I started at this corner and that's how my measurements are gonna go. So I have one inch squares. So I have six inches across the top, seven inches across the bottom. Um, sometimes your reference photo is a little bit bigger. This one, because I cropped it and then I 
printed it as large as it would go, that's just as large as it would go. Um, if you have a bigger one, sometimes they'll print the full eight by 10 size, then you would have eight across the top and 10 across the bottom. Um, the next step can get a little tedious. So listen carefully. Um, I do, like I said, I wanna make it larger. Now, if I'm working on nine by 12, a lot of times my paper will have one and a half inch squares. So I will be increasing the size of the portrait one and a half times instead of just a single transfer, it'll be one and a half times bigger. This board being 11 by 14 and then this photo only being six by seven, um, I have a little more room. I don't have enough room to go to full two inches. So I'm gonna be doing one and three quarters. That's a pain in the butt, but I marked my ruler and then I marked some of the lines ahead of time. Um, before I, I put them in. Now, each brand of paper acts a little bit differently. You are, as you know, we can erase everything down to nothing. So me putting lines on my paper isn't going to be a very big deal. Um, those lines can all go away within the painting. Do, um, one piece of advice, don't push too hard with your pencil. Um, I have seen it to where the lines are a little bit indented. So, you know, just don't push too hard. So I have everything marked out. So one and three quarters inch across and one and three quarters inch going down. So just I'm gently dragging my pencil across. Of course, those lines are going to be nice and heavy because it's the sanded paper and it's picking up every speck of graphite my pencil has to offer. Oh, I, hmm. I didn't use the sanded paper. <laughs> For, oh, oh, I have it. Okay. Oh, shoot. That's okay. Did you, oh, did, oh, you transferred on that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, you can, Oh, so you were painting on the charcoal paper, or we're going to yeah, paint. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's okay. That's all right. We have time. We'll get this started, and I don't know that it would hold very well, so. Of course, it's a little trickier going down because my ruler is not quite 14 inches, right? They're 12 inches. And I've tried to use my yardstick in this location and it doesn't quite work because the top of my easel and then the bottom of the easel and it always gets stuck. So let's keep it this. And this particular ruler is also a little bendy. I don't know why. I got it for one of the kids one year for school. So. There we go. I was hoping it wasn't going to take me the whole class just to get this. <laughs> page <laughs> <a little bit. laughs> yeah, Those, they do weirdly stick. <laughs> it's like, it's almost like the edges get glued or something. I found a weak spot. Oh, okay. <laughs> So a couple of my lines in the middle might be a little fatter because I was trying to straighten up the connection there. Um, so as you can see, I have a little extra room on the right side and that's totally fine. I'm not concerned about that. Um, Actually, though, let me get my eraser handy because I will be needing that soon. Hey. 
And so just a reminder, uh, erasing on the sanded paper, the, the white polymer eraser works the best. Um, kneaded erasers don't do you any good. And pink erasers can sometimes leave pink. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes they don't, it's weird. It's like they're made out of something weird. Okay. So my next step, now I'm gonna number really tiny so I don't have to. And you might think this is a little over the top, but <laughs> it helps me a lot to have these numbers sitting here. And once I get the drawing in place, I don't need the numbers anymore and I erase everything away. But this helps me translate, okay, in row four, section two, that's his ear. So row four, section two, his, his ear is going to be right in here. And, and we'll go from there. So make sure your pencil is nice and sharp. Um, I know I'm not going to need these lines down here, so I can preemptively get rid of them. And yes, I do that. I know it's silly. It could wait, but it, I feel like, you know, a little bit of accomplishment. Clean it up a little bit as you go. Um, and again, this is just a tool to make sure that your drawing is correct without losing your mind. Um, you know, some people can be critical of it. You know, don't worry about it. Just do what makes you happy. And if you feel better with drawing it directly, which I will do for the last week, I might regret saying that just because of <laughs> time constraints. Oh, I just gave myself a paper cut with the sanded paper. Oh, no. Um, but, you know, it definitely helps to have the practice drawing in place. Okay. Um, another handy thing you say, yeah. A big fat paintbrush. You don't have to have one this big, but just a nice soft um, paintbrush will really help. When we once we get our line drawing in, we're going to go back and erase all the lines that we don't need. And then when you do that, the easiest way to get rid of all of the crumbles is with a, a nice soft paintbrush. So you'll see that in a minute. Um, go ahead and take a few minutes and get your grid together. Um, decide how much larger, so I went one inch squares to one and three quarter inch squares. Um, if you're working on a big piece of paper, you could have one inch square to two inch squares. Um, typically, like I said earlier, if I'm working on nine by 12, do one inch squares on the photo and then one and a half on the paper. Um, so take a few minutes, I'll pause the recording, and if you want help with yours, let me know. <laughs> it's too bad to lean forward, my head's like right in front of the camera, it's terrible. Okay, so now it's time for the line drawing section. So, um, what's nice about this is some of the thinking is done for you because of the grid itself. Um, it's almost like a connect the dots. I do still have my skewer handy because, well, that's crooked. Um, this one's better. I have it handy because even within the squares, a lot of information can get a little bobbled up here. So inside one square is a whole eye and a part of a nose. So, you know, it seems like a one inch square isn't very big, but there's still room for error even in the grid method. So if anybody is ever critical of the grid method, there's still room to mess it up. So what we're going to do is talk about how not to mess it up. Um, and I just like to start. I'll just kind of start with, oh, wait, hold on a second now. If I start, then his head is going to be up here. 
And then I have extra room down here. But that's not a full square, is it? Hold on. It's almost. Hmm. I don't want his head so close to the top, I don't think. Because then if you frame it, then there's a frame that comes here and then his head's gonna come to right here. So first adjustment, I'm gonna adjust the location of my numbers. I'm moving everything down one so that I have extra room at the top of his head. And extra room at the top of his head and not so much extra space at the bottom. Um, the bottom square isn't a full square, but that's okay because it's just the bottom of his shirt. So I can fudge that anyway. So now that becomes one. So I moved everything down one because just looking at See, I erased those lines too early. Just looking at the placement of his head, and again, thinking about framing and matting or anything like that. Um, now we're good there. So clear up that up way. All right. So now, now we're into business here. So I can just start. You want to just look at very carefully, you're going to be looking at the exit points and the entry points per square. So if I start with square two, two down to, and don't throw my pencil too far, um, so as not to confuse myself, I will get rid of the top line because I'm not using that square. I don't want to accidentally count that. I've done such things before where you accidentally count what you know you don't need, and then that throws the whole thing off. Okay. So, two, two, little corner of his head. So I'm looking at where his hair touches right here. It's not quite halfway down. And then there's an angle not quite halfway across. I know that seems so simple, but it's those entrance and exit points that are gonna make this work. It's what helps us again, make the portrait a little bit larger. That's another reason for gridding is just to change the size. You can also go down. I mean, if you have a really big portrait and you wanna make it smaller, you certainly can. Um, Of course, his ear is a little tricky on the right side. I feel like I have to double check. I feel like that went over too far. See, it's pretty easy to even. Let's see, a little past half. Maybe that part went too far. I am drawing in um, just again, one of my regular harder pencils. Um, it's, uh, you can certainly draw a pastel pencil, which is helpful for when we're working with the lighter colors. The pencil doesn't like to, you know, be covered up very much. Um, I'll also show you how I handle that later, because clearly I'm using a pencil and I will have to fight some of that a little bit.
So even with the gridding, you still have to have some drawing, <laughs> some bit of observation and drawing in you. So he's almost got, this little guy's almost got two lines where his chin is falling. He doesn't have a double chin, but he has a shadow line that's making it look like there's a little something extra. So I'm just kind of going around the outlines first. Okay. Whew. It's even stressful just to get that little bit done, right? <laughs> it's a little bit of outline. So, you know, as I'm doing the line drawing, I don't want to go too crazy with details. Um, again, I don't want to put too much graphite on the paper. And um, a lot of it's going to be lost once we start doing the adding the pastel. But um, you want to get those big shapes in there, obviously, like the, all the lines. All the main outlines going. I do end up having to sharpen my pencil a couple of times for drawing this much on the sanded paper. I almost never draw this much <laughs> on sanded paper, especially for landscapes and such. I'm just, you know, drawing a very simple line usually. All right, let me give it a quick sharpen. I see I was, there's a clock in my studio and it's I, it takes, I got to get like the step stool out to change it. So I never changed it, but look at me go. This weekend is time change, so I don't be back to me. <laughs> I got right up to it, <laughs> Laziness. <laughs> <laughs> I think I hear that they're going to keep the daylight savings time like forever. Oh, like one of like the one time, like like spring or fall, you mean? Yeah. That would be nice. I'm kind of over it. <laughs> yeah, I am too. I and, vote for not changing. I don't even care what they do. Just yeah. Along with it. I don't know. It feels to me like they should have it on standard time, though, don't you? To match the rest of the world. Standard time would be awesome. Um, That's I know, I like, the, yeah, like, like there's a daylight savings, which is weird. I think. Yeah, I don't know. I know that like Indiana doesn't do it. There's another state that doesn't do the time change either, um, and they're fine. <laughs> They live. 
<laughs> Nothing has happened. <laughs> Okay, so you notice I've done everything but the hard stuff, right? <laughs> I've got everything but the middle. Um, I tell you what, when we did the Alan Picard class, and it's funny that I don't do it as much. I feel like, I feel like because I was in the workshop, I was more willing to take chances. Um, we drew. with a sharpened new pastel and we worked our way from the outline in. So like we didn't even place eyes, we placed shadows to make the eyes. And I we had so much fun and I was so confident. And then I left and I'm like, okay, let me take the safe route again. <laughs> um, so I think that's one of those things that I would have to do a lot more than I already do, I would have to paint portraits more than I get to. And I say get to because I do like to paint people a lot, a lot, but there's only so many hours in the day and oh, I can only paint so much. <laughs> my, it seemed like my friend that was with me loved was going on and on about the beach with the people. Oh, yeah. She says, how did she make their leg look? <laughs> so that's what she liked. If she was going to buy something, that was it. Yeah. Okay. She liked the people. Good to know. Thank you. Yeah, we did. That was a part of our Zoom class on uh, putting figures in the landscape. So we went through a whole series of exercises of well, drawing you know, people. I just love the way you do your wave pictures. And um, so many people have these grayish walls. Yes. And Unfortunately, their ha entire house is like two colors. Yes, and <laughs> gray just, and light gray. <laughs> yeah, and I just think that those wave pictures, they need that. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, you need some waves yeah, in you your life. You need a little color and interest yeah. in this house. Do like, there is a lot of people who have done a really, really nice job with their gray color scheme. You know, some of them are a little too sterile and then some of them have some really nice I'm over it palettes You're <laughs> over it. <laughs> I went in someone's house yesterday and she had all kinds of art and mosaics and colors oh, and yeah it's like yeah this yeah, is me this Not is where we need to go <laughs> so I'm using my skewer to get the angles of his bottom lip I'm not sure I'm happy with that just yet, but it's going to take a minute or two to get me to where I need to be to make sure that that's, I'm good with that. Um, all right, so that nostril gets split in half by a line. I will be erasing a lot, I have to say. This, um, This is where your brain kind of gets in the way, where you're thinking you're seeing something to be, you know, bigger or smaller or something. Looking at those entrance and exit lines. So the actual crease in his smile is right in the center of this square for me. And there's the shadow line. Inch by inch, step by step. Okay. 
And you know, when you get done with your line drawing, um, sometimes things still look maybe like they're not quite right. Um, some of it is simply because it's just a line drawing and we don't have all the shading and such in place just yet. So don't be too hard on yourself right away. I do want you to be careful with your line drawing, um, but it might not look quite right until we get some value and color in there. I don't think I have his mouth big enough. Let's see. More than. Just a smidge. One thing I was looking at with his mouth from the It is slightly tilted up. So slightly, barely slightly. Yeah, like the difference between Joker and slightly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am slightly drawing the teeth a little more specifically than I normally would just because I'm placing them with the lines. Um, but then when we go to paint them, they won't be so drawn. Definitely be toned down like that. It looks funny without the eyes. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm still gonna check where I place the edges of the nostrils. Right now his nose feels a little large. I guess it's not, but it just feels like it. It feels like that to me, but then when I you stand back and look at it, it is a little wide. Yeah, so it, yeah. Wide. It's, yeah, it's like the baby, <laughs> you know, the baby full. Um, and I, since I don't have his actual eyeballs in there yet. So that's the thing, like that's the hardest part for me in the end is one whole eyeball is in each, each square there. So for some reason, sometimes it's almost easier to work it out without the help of a grid because I'm just going um, and measuring and going and measuring. But now it's like, now I have these grid lines to work with. This ear is big enough, but maybe this is a little out. Okay, so I can see, let's start with something that touches the line. So his little outer edge touches right here. And the inner has an angle. That seems too low. Look at that again.
and of course his eyebrows are so pale. It's um, you know they're there, and they are a little tricky to paint once we get to them. But it's um, it gets a little you know weird looking when you're trying to place them with your pencil. And his little eyelids kind of go down a little bit, right, into Gotta fill in the eyes a little bit, otherwise it really looks creepy and I can't do that. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the line drawing does look a little creepy. So while it's in that thing, I'm going to go through and double check some of the placement one more time before I erase my guidelines. <laughs> Did you just do the transfer? Yeah, well, I figured I drew it freehand once. Right? And That's I'm exhausted. Yeah, no, you're <laughs> like, not. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. All right, so the line of his, the middle of his eyes. Like, but I like that. I would have not known how to do the charcoal, the first charcoal one. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to correct. And then it is nice to, to correct. So I'm going to take out this entire eyeball. I feel like it's wrong. And I, it's hard. Yeah, it <laughs> is. It really is. That's why a lot of people aren't very good at this. Yeah, faces. or or people like to start with the, the eye. And that can be just as difficult, you know, if you get one eye correct, <laughs> now you got to build a face around an eye. Yeah, that could be a little bit of a good idea. I, I do not think it is. I, I don't feel it is. Okay, so if I go corner to corner, I don't know. I go corner to corner. Maybe his eye wasn't too. All right, if I look pupil to pupil, there's an angle. Okay. 
Okay. But I have to get this right before moving on. And as much as I want to be like, okay, let's do <laughs> I can't. So let's see. You really can't. <laughs> you really can't. That's true. I have a um, face drawing uh, book that somebody gave me. Oh, yeah. Like cleaning at her yeah. house. She also <laughs> gave me a lot of pads, too. Oh, nice. Um, it said with the eyeball, start with the circle, like the iris. Uh huh. And then draw the eye around it. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's definitely a good tip. I'm trying to get the size of the eye. Because, so if I'm drawing an eye by itself and I'm building around it, that is certainly, I mean, I guess you could place the iris and then build up to it. it could be something. I can't say that I haven't done that before. I'm sure I have. <laughs> Let's see. Does, so the facing it, the left one is like higher of slightly, slightly. Yeah. Because like, of the head tilt yeah and his head tilt it's kind of funny because it's not really a tilt tilt but it's a tilt yeah and it's little. like you know one eye comes up one eye goes down One little thing that isn't right, tiny, throws mm -hmm. the whole thing off. Yes. Just and like in, a, in your face. Yeah. As you age. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what happened? Something changed Wait. like a millimeter. <laughs> now I'm recording. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. So here's what I'm going to do now, because I'm getting to that point where I'm just pushing my pencil harder and making deeper lines because I'm getting frustrated. Um, I think it's basically right. And the thing is, it's not gonna look perfectly right until we start to get in some of the, some of the shadowing and some of the roundness in the cheeks. And we're gonna be doing that with value and color combined. So, um, I'm just going to one more time check placement of the eyes and the size of the eyes, and then I'll build from there. Um, because fussing with pencil lines isn't going to do me much good soon enough. So if I go pupil to pupil, oh, pupil to pupil is a certain angle on this photograph. All right, pupils are in the right spot. That's a plus. If I go corner to corner, I should also run through the pupil. Okay. All right, so 
now that that's the line drawing is done, one in 10 o'clock, I'm going to erase all the other extra lines. And carefully, you know, you don't want to get too crazy and accidentally erase some good markings. Harder to erase, I guess, maybe. Yeah. Renee, I'm right handed. So when I start my pastel coloring, I like to work from left to right. Is that what you do? Uh, I'm also right handed and I just start wherever I want to because my hand never touches the paper. Okay, well, so, I have, I rest mine a lot and it's to get some, so I need okay. to. So yeah, to if you if you rest your hand on your painting a lot, then yeah, it would be best to work um, left okay. to right. Yeah. But, you know, the thing is, like, when I paint, I like to kind of paint all over so that I don't, well, let's put it this way. There's no one wrong way or right way to do it. I've seen, like, the really hyper-realist painters, they literally work from the top corner and spread yeah. down. Like, the, you know, um, I like to to keep, for me, to keep it things as natural as possible. I work all over so that everything is kind of at the same stage. I don't have one fully developed section of the painting um, at a time, you know, I kind of work all around the whole painting. And then, you know, so I'll be jumping all over the place. But I, what I do, especially in portraits, um, when I'm holding the stick, whatever it is, um, it's just the stick touching the paper. When I get to the point of needing details, I'll hold the stick and put my pinky down. So my pinky nail will hold my hand steady and away. Um, and then the only downside to that is I have a lot of pinky marks that I have to get rid of because sometimes it'll leave a little, a little mark. See my hand? I have black paper. <laughs> so you have to practice picking up your hand too. Yeah, it, you know, my my sister is left-handed and she's like, oh, I can't do pastel because I'm left-handed. And I'm like, no, you can. Because, you know, you just have to try to make sure you're not touching the paper with anything but the stick that you're using, which is a helpful thing to working straight up and down. So it would be, it would be odd for me to keep my hand on my paper because it's I'm kind of already in the air. I don't know. Um, so yeah, long story short, Mary, you're correct. <laughs> Work from left to right since you rest your hand. <laughs> I like your long stories, Renee. They're really very helpful. You cover a lot of things. My husband would have stopped listening 30 minutes ago. He's not, or actually that's more than that. <laughs> I give too many details for him. Can you get to it? What are you talking I about? Told that to him. Yeah. I like you know details. I do too. I'll listen. If somebody has something to say, I'll listen for an hour. I know. As long as it's something. Yeah. Normal. <laughs> I always joke because, you know, my son is a video gamer and I have heard, we used, especially in the beginning of COVID, we would go for walks and we would walk for like an hour or more, again, boredom. And um, I heard so many details about so many video games, <laughs> but I listened because I want to, I want them to talk to me. Whatever Gabby wants to tell me, I want to listen. I don't want to not know. Um, all right, so now that I have all of my little eraser crumbles on there, I'm gonna take my big soft paintbrush and wipe it away. 
what that is also going to do is lighten my pencil lines. It won't get rid of my pencil lines on the face that I didn't erase, but it'll lighten them up so they're not as harsh for me to cover up when I get to the point of painting with the lighter colors. So now it's a nice soft lines, but they're still there. See? Okay. <laughs> Now he even looks, even without now just removing the lines, he, he already is looking a little bit closer to who he is. You know, he's getting there. Does anybody need a break or a breather? <laughs> anybody? All right. I know, because I cheated. That's okay. <laughs> um, I know my, oh, well, I, I will tell you guys another quick little story. Since most of you were in the underpainting class that we did, and we were talking about, I was like, oh, I'm doing this one wave painting. I posted this one the other day. Ooh. And so I took down here, I made a little slurry of gesso and pumice and water. And then I took my palette knife and applied it for all the rocks. Oh. And then I already had color on it. It wasn't in the beginning. So I'd already painted most of it. And then I put the clear gesso and pumice right on top. And then oh. I came back with some of the lighter colors and I love it. Yeah, that's nice. nice. Really yeah. Did a painting like that. uh, yeah, that's the first time I did a painting where I, I mean, I already had just so. all of the, I mean, I was working on the rocks and I felt like they were getting too soft and I was wanting to get the right texture. And so I was like, well, what's the worst that can happen? So then yesterday, <laughs> yesterday I did a different wave and I wanted the crash of the wave to have more texture. So I took the same concept. I'd already had a lot of the pastel down and then I took a paintbrush and kind of dabbed it in there. So it would be more of the, the watery crashy kind of a feel. And I let it dry and then I started to go over it. And at first I really liked it and then it got kind of weird. So now my hand is really tired because I pushed and pulled and scraped and I scraped away some of the gesso and I, it was, <laughs> it was So exhausting. are you gonna do it now for all those kind of for the rocks? I think for really I think good. for certain things I you know I'm gonna incorporate it more often, you know, yeah. especially for jetty rocks. I can't um with Rembrandt. Yeah, I can't make that w really white, white uh -oh. foamy stuff because it's got too much binder. Is that that's what it is? So when you have when you, are you talking about when you scrape and make the thing, or are you talking about the the foam on the waves? The white, yeah, the really, you get it really white. It never will come that way with mine. Yeah, so that that might be where you end up having to get just a stick. Well, like this stick right here. This is my like sacrificial stick for that. This is a white from Unison. So it comes, they're like $12 or $13 a stick, but they're big and they're fat and they last a long time. So I use that, I scrape that into my cup to make my little Unison mixture in white. Yeah, so Dakota, um, Dakota Pastels, they sell the individual big sticks. Oh, so you, you can't like order them on Amazon? I don't know, I've never tried. Um, but Dakota, I go to Dakota a lot. They have sales a lot. Okay. All right, so here we go, right? So now it's time to get painting. <laughs> Um, <laughs> your arms. I know my arm is so tired from yesterday. Like the whole shoulder is like, ah, that's okay. That's all right. So just like with anything else, um, in pastelling, we're going to work dark to light. Um, you don't have to, you don't have to go really, really dark. It doesn't have to be super dark. Um, but we're, we'll be building into the light. And I do want a little bit of of heft in there because when we put the light on top so not to sound crude but 
if you go straight to the lightest color, it's going to look dead. The skin will look dead and not, not like there's blood flow, you know? So when you have the darker, richer colors underneath and you bring them into the light, then there looks like there's blood flow. <laughs> we don't want to paint, you know, cadavers. So um, another gentleman, I don't know how to pronounce his name. He's a, an Asian gentleman that he does a whole underpainting in green. And I've done that before. Um, I'm not sure it did much for me, but it's just, but it was something he did like a whole scale in green. That sounds weird. Yeah. For a face. <laughs> but I, but it works. It's it kind of, doesn't. Um, when I was in a workshop for figure painting in Philadelphia, that's the three colors we used to make skin were cadmium orange, cadmium green, light, and white. So orange, green, and white makes any version of Caucasian skin you need. <laughs> it's crazy, but it works. It's the green. <laughs> it's the green. All right, so I'm going to start with, what am I going to start with? The coloring in the photograph is, I'm going to have to add a little something to it because I feel like it's a dull, I mean, he's the, he's wearing a black and gray shirt, you know, so that's kind of reflecting and it's giving like this dullness to the shadows and I don't want there to be dullness in the shadows. Um, I'll start with this one. I'll start with this one. So it's kind of a, a deep mauve orangey kind of a color. Um, really is going to look oh, a little bit horrendous. Pencils? You can use pencils if you want. You can go straight in with your hard uh, or with your soft sticks. You can go in with, um, I'm using my new pastel sticks just because this is the color that I wanted, I think. Um, the more I'm looking at it, I can certainly take it into, There's some lavenders in it, so I'll be brightening it up. But now that I've kind of started with this, I'm going to keep going with it for a little bit and work on finding shadows, finding those shapes. I want to use. <laughs> probably this is going to be a little orangey, but we'll be combining colors anyway. So you can probably go into that. He's a little to start with. Yeah. Tiny shit. Yeah. Too. Where's that one? <laughs> We're going to use them so you, oh, yours is really sharp, though. Yeah, this one happens to be sharp, but you'll be okay. Just, stay, yeah, just stay up towards the tip, which I normally never tell anybody to do. I'm always saying use the whole stick this time. Just be gentle with the marks. Don't, don't make hard lines. Mm So what I like to do is, you know, again, working dark to light, I'm blocking in as much as I can. I want to get as much of the surface going as I can. Without really obscuring any of my drawing lines. almost a good color for some of that shadow and his hair too.
Oh, I've switched colors. This is like a a mauvey, a little bit of pink in it. So I'm just starting to add to those darks just to get something else into them. And then I can kind of spread this out into the mid tones. I'm not sure if you can tell on screen that I am still trying to work with directional markings just a little bit. Um, it still helps even in stuff like this. Are weird. Ears are weird. Um, I just take a look at um, the shadow shapes. Just try and build as much as you can with shadow shapes. I've switched to my unison. Now this is a pale color, but it's certainly not as pale as that light reflecting on his face is going to be. But like I said before, I want a little bit of something there. So he's not just pale. gone too far there. It, on his nose, it almost looks like the shadow is sort of in the middle, which is weird for some things. I know. Yeah, it is. It's kind of like a straight line when it shouldn't be a straight line. Peachy. I want so much peachy. A little orange. And that brings them into the warmer things on the left side is a little warmer than the right side. It's like a paint by number. It is kind of a paint by number <laughs> for a minute, you know? And that's exactly what I kind of do is just to get, you know, little blotches of color built. Hmm. Maybe it's in that peach. I don't know. This is probably too dark. What is it? Oh, the... here's a good color. I think. It's not quite as dark. Peachy is yours though. Should I try to work for feet? No, just use what, you know, I have such a huge variety. If I, of if I go a little bit with that one, then I can do a little bit with that one. That's yeah. peachy. Yeah. So, and then you've got those nice pinks up at the top there too. Like, this oh. is a good shadow color. Even though, I mean, I know it's bright, but I think this one's going to be good. That one's going to be good. Do more with this 
Yeah, you can. And like in the deepest parts of the shadows. I'm going to be looking for a little bit of there's I feel like there's an overall purpley kind of a vibe happening, but I don't want to put too much of it in. I don't want to mess things up too much. Um, so. Especially his ears are the pinkest part. They are the pinkest part. For sure. You know, you didn't do anything on his lips yet. No, not yet. I will. Um, not and not in the center of his eyes yet either. That is the one trick with um portrait painting is we certainly won't get all the way done um in one session, but we'll get a few of the steps in so we know where to do what to do on our own. Like it. I don't want them to be too red overall. You guys have a lot of pink glowing in there, but I just don't want them to be nothing but pink. My daughter's picture looks like she's in a sunlight or a sunset. It's a lot of orange in it. Yeah. Same with the hair. This this kid's got some really brightly colored hair. So I'm putting in stuff that's a little darker. Um, and then I can bring it back into the light. And yes, this is a, a green. I'm doing that on purpose. Um, <laughs> it will work itself out later. <laughs> but for right now, I did that on purpose. <laughs> also pink. Yeah, some of the colors that are in the, the Alan Picard recommended colors are really similar to my new pastel sticks. What in the So I'm pulling out. So the Dakota set, you can see how small the sticks are. There's not very many sticks in there. I bought one of their boxes. Um, it might have been like a 24 set, maybe. Not even. Yeah, maybe 24. Um, but it has some other nice skin tones. So I'm just kind of working this mid fleshy tone in there. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I want to get it in there. And it's going to kind of mix up into his hair because his hair really is, again, it's so fine. It kind of needs that little bit. Again, I'm just kind of lacing all this skin color so I can 
highlight it too. Um, and there's a couple of steps to this. This isn't just, ooh, I'll place it and we're done, voila. Um, I will have. Well, that's kind of richer. I like this one too with that because that beigey color, you know, when you get the wrong color foundation and it makes you look dead, I think that's what this one did. Oh, this one's got a nice little purpley feel to that paint. When I started to place the nostrils, of course, I don't have my glasses on, so they're not quite in the oh, right spot. No, 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 I don't, no, I don't need them because I won't get there that far to all the details just yet, but um, I will get there soon enough. And I have another pair of stars. <laughs> There's glasses all over the house. Because my husband uses them too. This is a little bit of a brown. Um, I do end up having a little bit of black with like the um, with the pupils and such. This might be the time that you actually use your brown for itself. Right? <laughs> the best for these because you don't like it in yeah, landscapes. I don't like them in landscapes. That is correct. Yeah, like a dark color on my. So even in all these wonky colors, he's still he's already starting to come to life a little bit here. Just a little bit. Okay. Is anybody sending me anything? I'm hearing my email go off. Is anybody sending me pictures? No, I haven't. No? Okay, good. Don't want to ignore anyone. <laughs> You're crying out for help. <laughs> Let's see. I'll send you stuff later. <laughs> All right. Much later. <laughs> much, much, much later. <laughs> like <laughs> Saturday, right? <laughs> <laughs> Two days, Renee, you might see something from it. I don't know, Mary. You work pretty fast. Uh, not not with humans. I think with pets, I just fly by. But with humans, it's so much slower. It's all right. Yeah. But that's why I don't take on humans. <laughs> if we were covered in fur, it'd be a lot easier. Yeah, covered in fur yeah. does sometimes help. <laughs> Fur, feathers, or scales. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he's got this nice little orangey kind of tint to his lips. I'm going to have to really mess with those colors. So, because we don't want him to look like he's wearing lipstick. Um, but I just want to get a little bit of color placed around there for a second so it's not empty. Oops. Yeah, no lipstick. All right, I'm going to take So this is my really dark purpley pencil. I'm just placing a little bit of the darkness. I am nowhere near this being 
the right dark, right? Um, but I want to get some dark. His eyes, I, I asked my friend because I, I wasn't quite sure. And his eyes are like a hazel green gray color, which will be pretty. If yours, if you like yours, are you going to give it to her? Um, she actually said she wanted to buy them. No pressure. <laughs> so, yeah, right. Kind of, yeah. No pressure. <laughs> It's all funny. I did say, I was like, listen, if you don't like it, this is, this wasn't meant for you to, you know, I didn't want to like trick anybody into buying something, but you know, if you don't like it, then certainly you don't have to buy it. I'm going to get but a little bit. She's going to love it. Yeah. What? She's going to love it. Oh, you know what? <laughs> it looks good. It looks like his his little face. It's getting there, right? Yeah. Oh, really. I'm using light, 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 light blue for the whites of his eyes for a minute. Oh, what did you use in the, did you use black or anything in that? No, I used the, the really deep purple, which I think you might even have in there. And, um, oh yeah, you definitely have that. And a little bit of a really deep green brown too. But again, I'm just kind of placing a little bit of that information, not going crazy. Colors. Yeah, there are a lot of colors in there. Purple. That's blue. What's it say? Does it say a number on there? Seven seventy. One thousand four hundred seven seventy. So look for the seven seventy. Oh, it's all three. Yeah, this is three eighty five. I think this one might be. It looks like zoom. Does that fit? What's that? That is blue. It might be too gray. Uh, seven seventy. That's, that's it. Oh, I didn't realize it. Okay. It was up with the grays. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So his teeth aren't even white, white. They almost have a little shadowy and, and pink on it. So I'm going to let that be for a minute. So the next step. So I've pretty much gotten all of this covered, right? And nothing is exactly correct in the coloring world. So, um, and this is, this is your choice if you want to do this or not. I like to take pipe insulation at this point. No, I can't do it that. Just kind of settle things out. If I want to come back with chunky color, I certainly can. But I don't want to fight the, the tooth of the paper. But I have to do it in a very casual, not casual, careful manner so that I don't ruin too many lines, you know? So I go again, I'm keeping with directional markings. I'm not... I'm not moving things around so much that I'm creating new colors. I'm just kind of settling some things down a little bit. So I, you know, pull down on his neck there. Just softening some things as I go. His little chin. Careful not to mess up lines that I need specifically for drawing, right? Still kind of working around his mouth there. And it's gonna soften everything that we did. So, you know, some of the things you might be like, oh, well, I shouldn't have done that. But trust me, it's worth it to do this little step. The pupil doesn't seem like it's very close to the bottom. 
it's like they're in it's the yeah it's closer it's like there's a shadow mm -hmm. and it's combined with the shadow i did kind of lose his eyebrows there because they were so close to skin color i'll mess with that later I didn't blend anything in his eyes. I don't want to do that just yet. But I can take a little bit. I'm keeping his hair really short um, to his forehead because I want to get the color in his forehead settled before I put the light, light blonde onto it. Because you can see his skin through most of that hair. So I want to get the forehead done first and then I'll bring the hair down. So for right now, it looks like his hair is really wrong and really short. Um, okay. Um, if it's not moving enough, you can certainly add more. Yeah, it, I don't have, didn't have as much as you did. Yeah. Maybe a little more in his nose. Yeah. On screen, he looks a lot better than he does in life right now. <laughs> I'm going to even add a little bit of his shirt color for right now because I need to give my brain a break. <laughs> so I'm going to get into, I'll probably use an eggplant instead of black. I don't want things to go too Heavy. Also makes you feel like you're accomplishing a little bit more when you get the shirt in there. Just <laughs> that helps you. Um, while you're going, you know, I'm thinking about background colors. Um, I usually do a little something in the background, you know. I'll give him a little bit of a blue gray in the center and then I can work on the folds of it later. Oh, I bought this pastel magazine in uh -huh. Michael's. Yeah. Did you ever? You pastel talk? journal or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they have their, I just got it in the mail the other oh, day. Oh, you have Yeah, I did too. I got there. it yesterday. Yeah. All of the, the winners from the pastel 100 are in there. I had the one woman. I, it, she uh, tried to be really realistic with the animals and things. Oh, uh, was it Julie Freeman or Deb LaFong? Oh. <laughs> I was going to lend it to you. I do have it. I do have it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> All right. I'm just kind of looking at him for a minute. Um. He's getting there. He's not him just yet, but he's getting there. Could that be Emma Colbert that you were talking about in the past? Oh, yeah. Job? Emma's really good, too. I don't know. I'd have to look at the magazine. I didn't go through it yet. I've been saving it. <laughs> I'm still waiting for mine. It didn't come yet. Sometimes I have to be in the right frame of mind because I didn't get into that competition. <laughs> they rejected me. <laughs> Really? So, yeah, I never get into the big, big one. I mean, it's funny because I was looking at um, I was looking at uh, show submit. So, show submit is how you enter. Like a lot, of, there's a couple of different websites, you know, that do that. Like the you know the pastel societies use. So you can enter your work and show submit uses is for um, the Pastel Society of America and IAPS use them. And I had entered, I haven't heard yet. I, I entered one for um, 
IAPS. And they had said that they were supposed to announce the people who were accepted yesterday and then the awards on the 28th, but that was a mistake. So anyway, long story short, I'm looking in show submit to see if there was any information and all the years of me entering PSA and IAPS, <laughs> rejection, rejection, rejection. Oh, rejection. no. So it's like, well, then, <laughs> should I just tally up another one now? I don't know. So, you know. Can they I, uh, see that? Huh? Do they see that or not? Thinks. So. I mean, I guess, I don't think so. Because it's just in my account, you know, like oh, my account shows. Yeah, like, you know, but they revamped the website because you used to not, you would have to go looking for that kind of information, but now it's right there in your face. So, <laughs> you know, let's take that with a grain of salt and move on. It's, but it is subjective. It is very subjective. And I, I just, I try not to take it to heart. And, um, you know, last year I did get accepted as one of the top, what was it? Top 50? for the UART competition, the, the online, the paper. Um, I think it was top 50, but it, that was that was an international competition. I was shocked. I mean, but that's good. Yeah, that was really nice. That was a, a pleasant one. So it's, you know, I just, again, I just keep plugging away. It's not ever going to stop me from painting. No. <laughs> you know, so. No. And, you know, there's a lot of, really good people there there are there are a <laughs> lot of really good people who have been doing it for a lot longer than me so that's the kind of stuff that I know that you know a small percentage of the population but there's a lot of people out there there that's are a lot so of people cool. out there and there's a lot of you know it is interesting you know I I do you, you notice that it's a lot of the people that are the usual you know, I call it the usual suspects, the ones that always get in and the ones that always win. Mm -hmm. They're also the ones that are doing the judging, like they take turns <laughs> doing the judging. <laughs> so, right. you know, they all know each other. So maybe, you know, but that's okay. I just, I, you know, who knows? That's, that's could also be my little hurt ego say, yeah, well, <laughs> they all know each other, it's you know. <laughs> I try to keep my senses about me when it comes to that kind of stuff. Well, you have some judges that are famous abstract artists. There's one in the Dakota uh, contest that's just starting to come up. And she's an abstract artist. Now, how will she judge paintings that are more abstract? Yeah. Who is it this time? Is it is it Deborah Stewart? I think it is, yes. She's it really is. nice. I yeah, had I her at IAPS. I had dinner with her at IAPS uh, in yeah. 2017 or no, 2019. Uh -huh. She's really nice. But well, you're right. Though, that It makes you wonder, like, how do they see non-abstract work? That was but, wondering. I have four things I entered for pictures. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm just wondering how she'll just breeze right by them and not give yeah, them a Yeah, I don't know. I don't think she'll breeze right by them because she comes from the education system. Um, she has a really neat kind of story. I mean, she was like really high up and wherever she lived um, in the administrative side of things, um, she was a really neat person to talk to. I entered as a I new- I want to get back to IAPS again because I met a lot of nice people at IAPS and it's amazing the connections. You don't really realize, didn't feel like you met a lot of people. And then when you come back home, you're like, oh, wow, I really did meet a lot of people and have uh -huh. a lot of new friendships. Well, I should say acquaintances online, you know? Mm -hmm. I've friendships, but everybody in the pastel world is super nice um, in giving with information, you know? Oh yeah. So I'm continuing with the same kind of theory here. So I've, I've modeled everything in, spread it all kind of in. And now I'm looking at, all right, now I want to bring it up to the right value, you know? So I added 
you know, looking at here on his highlight here, it's a clearly a, a yellow sunlight of some kind coming in. So I added more of a pale yellow on top of everything. And now I've got a little bit of pink because that transition between the light and into the shadow, there's like a little bit of pink going on in there. Because the pale yellow is sometimes too pale. On camera, it actually looks much better. But it's coming. Um, what time is it? Okay. So it's what well, we've got 40 minutes left of class. So again, I will not be finished. It's, it's, it's like, yeah, it's going fast today. And it's, I don't even feel like I'm working that fast. Too. I know, I right? More even more engrossed when it's a person's face. Well, and we're really, yeah, we're really concentrating. We're really kind of staring and thinking and pushing. Um, so when I get closer to working with his eyes and such, um, I will be. gently notching things in. I So when I say notching, and I, I know a lot of you have heard me use that term before when we're talking about direct painting and I'm doing a landscape and I'm just, I don't wanna blend anything. So I'm just making little, little marks back and forth, back and forth. It's gonna be similar here too. Um, when I get up to the eyes, because I want to build his eyes. I don't want to just, that's probably too yellow. Yeah, that's probably more for his hair. That's going to be good for his hair. Um, I don't want to just draw little lines in there. I mean, I could easily get out my pastel pencil and draw lines. I yes. don't want to, yes. <laughs> so I'm trying to avoid that. There will be lines in there. Don't get me wrong. But um, I'm just trying to give hints of things. I will not be drawing eyelashes. They're there. They are there. Um, but there will be just a hint within color and value. Um, I'm going to leave his eyebrows out for a minute until I get the skin that's underneath. So it's the same as his forehead. I want the forehead skin done before I pull his bangs down on top. Same thing with his eyebrows. They're so pale, like his hair color. I want to get the skin that's underneath it first before I try to do. And there, and again, most children, their eyebrows are, did not come in thick and bushy. <laughs> They're usually pretty, um, pretty thin. But I can work on things like the shape of the ears, some of those highlights. It's pretty dull. Sometimes the pinks um, end up being too old, too dull. Um, so don't be afraid to brighten up the pinks with some of these vibrant orangey pink, peachy pinks. The combination of the two, just like we would do in a sunrise and sunset, the combination of the peach and the pink make the perfect color. So like that orange color that I just put there, oh, I got to change that. Looks like a little mustache, a little Hitler mustache. Right, well, <laughs> I'll take that a little bit. There we go. Um, it looks weird by itself, but then when you start to put the pink on top, that it settles itself down a little bit into the right family. So, you know, the further along we get, the less helpful our fingers will be, the less helpful 
um, the pipe insulation will be. So that's when stop using it. Well, no, you don't stop using it, but like if I'm trying to blend into a tight area, I can use my pencil to help me move some around. It'll leave a little bit of color based on how much tooth there is. But you can see it leaves little piles. Oh, you can't really see it on camera, but it'll start to leave little piles. So you don't want all that pile, but it helps you build some stuff. Renee, when I used to use, when I first started about four years ago, I used the uh, sanded paper uh -huh. and, and I used the pipe insulation to move things around. But when I switched to the pastel mat two years ago, I started to not use the, I didn't like the way the pipe insulation worked on the pastel mat. So I started using more stubs to pass. I can see that pastel mat has a whole different, it's a little more velvety. It's not it's yeah. not um, sandy. So the I use pastel mat like once for a portrait, and you're right. It's not you're not moving it the same as you would no sanded paper. Well, it's actually tearing it up. So I, didn't I can like see it. that. Yeah. We don't see any. When I was looking at that and seeing that magazine and seeing what people use, uh huh. They used. You are 400 mostly? Yeah. Or pastel mat? Yeah. Nobody was using pastel premier. No. <laughs> they do not. I I used pastel premier once and then, you know, helping you the first couple of sessions in the library. <laughs> I, I never really did like it much. They tried to say it was the same as um, Kitty Wallace paper. So Kitty Wallace... For those of you who don't know, some of you know, Kitty Wallace had, she was a pastelist who just decided to create her own paper. And it was glorious. <laughs> um, it, was vel it was velvety, but it had, it wasn't as sanded as this one, but it was a sanded surface, but it was a smoother sanded surface, not quite as smooth as pastel matte feels, um, but just a really good surface. And then she had problems with manufacturing. Oh. So she stopped and then she released like another batch of like, so I, I got a batch, gosh, years ago. I mean, it's been gone for a while, but I've seen people, oh, I found a whole batch of Kitty Wallace at a yard sale. You're like, no, I mean, people, uh, uh, you yeah. talk about, <laughs> yeah, if you talk about Kitty Wallace paper, and like I apps people, you know, you'll get shanked. Like, come on, they're gonna take your paper. <laughs> they, that's, I mean, very beloved. And I, and then so she sold her formula. And this again is all rumors. I have, I don't know Kitty <laughs> in any <laughs> capacity, but the rumor was she sold her formula to Pastel Premier, and. People say the pastel premiere, or they they're you know saying that it was supposed to be the closest to Kitty Wallace that you could get, and I completely disagree. <laughs> I don't. Um, I'm not a huge fan of pastel premiere paper. I mean, it's fine, but um, not after the batch. Oh yeah. Yeah, you had a bad batch. There was a bad batch. Um, but I just I like the consistency of you art, um, and I do have a pack of pastel mat um but it's like i said you're learning how to use the paper um so every paper behaves differently just like all the brands of pastel behave differently so you just have to pick what speaks to you best and not worry about what everybody else uses i'm staring at colors right now so i yeah. put a little bit of green in his eyes he's got like that um she said hazel yeah. green Eyes. Yes. Let me see what she said. A brownie. Maybe. I'll tell you exactly what. But if you're trying to like really make it look like him. Green hazel. Green slash hazel is what she told me his eyes are. 
So I'll probably pop a little bit more green in there because I was thinking they were brown, but then I was like, oh, I do see green. So it, I used to always think my sister's uh, eyes were brown. Mm -hmm. And then I saw her in a different light. And I said, oh, your eyes look kind of green. And she says, yeah, they're actually our hazel. <laughs> but it depends on the lighting. It does depend on lighting. And um, well, it's funny because my mom, I always said my eyes are green. And my mom, not that long ago, was like, well, something, and she said something about my blue eyes. I'm like, I don't have blue eyes. But then another friend was like, you have blue eyes. I was like, I, okay. So I think it's just <laughs> dependent on light. Even the clothes you wear. Yeah, the clothes you wear, the light outside, all that good stuff. Now, looking at his face in this, it really, like in the photograph, it mm -hmm. looks grayish. Yeah. It, would that be a bad, bad move to put yes. any kind of gray on That's why I'm taking, face. like, so all of these darker shadows, I'm yeah. not, I think it's a reflection of his shirt. So his shirt is black and gray. Um, and I think that's, it's bouncing up, causing more of a... Um, yeah, you give the kid a gray face and the mother will be like... Hey, yeah, it's not there. gonna, yeah. <laughs> a, a gray face is probably not going to be to anyone's benefit. So when I get to the little creases in the eyes and stuff, I do pull out the pencils. Um, actually, that line went too far. But definitely make sure you take a minute to literally like meditate or something before you start getting really close to the eyes because you need to really take your time and just gently place each mark. An undercoating of green with brown on top. Right? Yeah, that would work. It, like the outside of the iris looks like it has like darker mm -hmm. yeah he does have like a little ring which a lot of us do we have that little ring that goes you know around the color around the iris I didn't this is a, for sure isn't the end of the coloring that I'll put in his iris um I'm looking for, so this is another tricky situation too. I feel like there is a lot of purple, again, because of the reflection from his shirt, a lot of purpley kind of colors hanging out in the shadows of his face. Now that could go extremely wrong. Um, <laughs> if you go too dark, then it turns into that whole gray feel. And if you go too light, well, then it cools it off and it's not the right color anyway, or not the right value. That's kind of pretty. It is nice to just throw in little bits of blue and whatnot to the skin. just for fun, but let's see, fun, it's right at 11. Whew. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going a little bit here. Let's get it. So in all of that little bit of blending, I took away ended up taking away a little bit of the uh, shape of his mouth. So I'll have to be putting that back in. And the mouth shape is just very carefully placed just like the eyes. 
You can see my pinky mark. I'm leaving little marks over there on my board, which is fine. Whew. This is also one of those times where I'm, you know, you just start to get a little tired. You know, well, this I'm, is pretty intense. <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah, this is, I mean, it's a lot. So I certainly don't do many portraits all in one session. Oh, there's some possible. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a project, huh? Yeah, it's definitely gonna take me a little while. Although I have to say it is nice that she's interested in purchasing, so it will certainly spur me on to uh, <laughs> keep working. Finish it, right? Yeah. I still don't want to blend too much, even, even now. I'm going to try and keep it a little less blended. I really like the way that looks on camera over here. In person, I don't like it as much, but I guess I'm getting there if I like it on camera. The way his smile lines go, you're right. It does. It could end up looking like a painted face, like the Joker, you know, with the way the he's got these little shadow lines that come down around his chin, and it's almost a little too much. So I'll be his lip is thinnish on the yeah on the top. Yeah. It thins out, and it gives this little curl to it because he's. Not really, you know, it's when you smile, that's what happens. Yeah, caught him like forming the smile almost. And the circle under his eye is really, really dark. And I think it's just a shadow. So I don't, you know, again, when we talk about even with landscape painting, your photographs certainly sharpen and darken. So, you know, I have to take that into consideration, even with the portrait, you know, it, it could be just sharpening and darkening the shadows on his face, and I can take my artistic license and not do that, you know. It's not like the kid has, like, severe dark circles. Right, it's, it's just shadow, and I don't want it to look like he needs some makeup. Yeah, <laughs> like some maid sealer. <laughs> My dark circles never go away. <laughs> Mine are brutal. I inherit those from my mother. Mm. There is makeup on there. It's horrible. I had a friend. I have a friend who's always had such dark circles. It just looks like she's got a black eye all the time. And she's she doesn't bother wearing makeup. She's like, there's no use. Nothing covers it. So it's better with makeup. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, sometimes I'll take, you know, the side of my pinky to just soften some things. Um, of course, my ring finger has the cut, so I can't use that. I keep trying to, oh. but I don't want to use, I can't use the Band-Aid. So we got to stay away from grays. We got to stay away stay from, away from yep grays. Stay away from grays. And really, you know, push yourself into, you know, they have these lovely scarlets. Um, I put a little bit on his mouth, but they're great for some shadow shapes. They're great in the ears. Um, it doesn't have to be an exact color match, but I would, if you're going to lean toward anything, lean towards scarlets um, and some of those rosy colors instead of browns and grays. Um, like even just that bit of scarlet that I put in his ears really helped that feel. I think I can put some down here. He needs a lot on this side as in shadow. But it gives it that blood flow too. Um, I mean, I wouldn't put a whole lot 
you know, over here has a nice little glow, but if I put it down and just touch it into place. So I, another cautionary word is to not over blend. That's really easy to do, especially on portraits because we're trying to get the skin to be smooth, right? You know, you're trying to get that whole, you know, especially with children, they have such smooth skin. So you want to make sure that it's perfectly blended. So do your best to not blend it into oblivion. But if you need to touch it, just a gentle swipe with the outside of your pinky, um, just a barely a swoosh. And then, you know, you'll get little piles here and there. So make sure you keep your finger clean and dry as you're going. So some of those mid-tones that I put in earlier, which I liked the color at the time, really look icky. Like this, it's got like a green tint to it that's not forming well. You're just in the ugly stage and you'll get out of it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like there's, you know, it just takes a while to build everything up. Um, you know, this isn't a caricature at a carnival. This is, you know, a real portrait. So you have to give yourself plenty of leeway. And if you have, so here too, on this little fella in particular, there's maybe only one or two places where the um, shadow lines are sharp, right? So we don't want sharp, sharp lines on the face. So if you do have a transition, like right in here between, you know, the curve of his cheek and to the top of his lip, that creates, it looks like a pretty sharp line of dark to light, but it's not really a sharp line. It's a kind of blurred. So just take your finger and just tap the two lines at the same time and just soften it up a little bit. So you still get the direct change in value, but you don't have to have a sharp line in between. Good. That ear is messed up. I guess I can fix it. Yeah, I don't think it's that messed up though. I don't yeah, I, that's fixable. <laughs> yeah. So next week, I'll be starting on the, the next portrait, which is her other grandson, which is even younger. He's a more a baby. Um, I'll send you guys the photo just so you know what I'm going to be working on. And again, feel free to work on whatever portrait you want. Um, hopefully, I'll get this finished up. I don't know that I'll get it finished up over the weekend, though. Are you I'll going have... to the flower show? I went to the flower show last weekend. Oh, I was yeah. yeah, it was so crowded. Yes. Um, yeah. It was good. I just, you know, we didn't get through. We didn't wait for the exhibit lines. I mean, it was like a ride at Disney trying to get through all those little. A long time setups. ago, we said never on a Saturday. So, yeah, if um, I could have not done a Saturday, that would be my only thing is I wouldn't go on a Saturday again. But the kids, that was when. Sam's yeah, yeah. girlfriend could go, but yeah, not Saturdays was my sister um takes off from work. Yeah. My mother-in-law went up with her sister. Um, and they do like a bus trip, like one of those community bus trips. I'm like, that's probably a really good idea, you know. Uh, I know where to I know a good parking garage, and I've also gone where they 
like by 295 you drive up there the oh and they shuttle the train yeah. yeah oh yeah. the train okay yeah i mean there's so many i i actually didn't have a problem parking i did find a, a lot i just stumbled upon and i had to never go off orange street i don't even know where i was no. i uh i was up kamak oh. from there um but I had to pee so bad by the time I got there from because I drove up to Westchester to get his girlfriend and then we drove from Westchester in and uh oh okay. so I, it was just I just I, by the time we got inside the convention center I was dying and there's this lady we walk in and there's the the line to the bathroom of course for the girls is like crazy long and um the guys there's nobody in the guys line sam went right in and i was like i'm really tempted to go in and this lady walks up and goes who's with me i'm going in the men's room i'm like i am <laughs> I'm, like, I'm right there <laughs> that's great yeah and she's like don't you leave me now <laughs> no i won't leave you <laughs> All right, so the inside of the white of his eye is not really as bright because it's in shadow. So I just add a little pink to that because you see how this eye is like really, the whites are really glowing. This eye just kind of toned it down on the inside a little bit. So I'll do the same over here, although I think I have too much white on this side. Tone it down just a touch. All right. Blend it more and then stop blending it because it's crazy. And so at some point too, the pencil doesn't give you a nice marking, which is why I try to stick with even like some of the soft sticks. Sorry, my head's going to be in the way for a second. Sorry. Oh, that looks so good. He's really looking great. Thanks. Let's just like them. Getting there. <laughs> There's some wonky stuff, but we're oh, getting there, right? But once you got his eyes in, now he's really got some personality. He's coming to life. Yeah. The eyes are certainly always a big deal with portraiture. You know, that can make or break a portrait. I'm not putting that little sheen on his eyes just yet. You know, the little the white spot twinkle that we always love because that's going to get dirty. Is that a name for that? I don't know. It's like, yeah, that's the, the, the white dot, the white <laughs> dot that everybody has, but it somehow, even in pet portraiture, it makes the painting finish. Like that little dot, it really means. I save it lot. to the end because when I'm the other pastels going to keep going over it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, before, before you're finished. So you might as well just save it to the end. That's exactly what I talk about with any other portrait or any other painting, landscape or whatnot, is you gotta save. wait. You gotta wait because otherwise you're gonna be painting around a detail that's too hard to paint around. All right, I'm gonna stop myself here. It's about 1120. I'm gonna switch the cameras over. And then, but it's a gallery. Okay. Gallery view. Um, I'm gonna stop the recording here. Well, actually, so quickly, you know, when we're working on the eyes, I'm gonna be using really kind of small markings. You can see how many pastels that I already have popped up that I've been using. Um, along with some of the sticks. So I'm hoping to have this finished for next class. And if we have it finished for next class, I'll go over again, a little bit more detail of some of the markings like that. I was just darkening up the white of his eye because um, there is a lot more shadow in the whites of his eye than I was thinking there was. Um, but we'll get there. Let me go ahead and stop the recording.